Hi, Darrow here. Welcome back to Sweet Hot Rods and Honey. Today we're gonna work on putting seat belts in the front seat. Uh, we're gonna do three point seat belts on the 55 Chevy and uh, we'll see how things go. Here are the seat belts that I got. I got them from Seatbelt Planet, and uh, they look like they're good quality, certified. I look through the parts, everything is here. This is the bag for the driver's seat, and what we're gonna do is just work on the passenger side. It's a three-point system. <clears throat> And generally, seat belts aren't that difficult to put in, but because it's a three point, I've got to put this, uh, that top anchor point at the post. And so what it did was measure by guesstimating. Uh, I don't have my front seat in yet, so I don't really know exactly where my shoulder is going to land at the point of the post but I've got a, a, a little stool here and measured distance from the floor to the top of the seat on the on the real seat bench seat so this is about that height it's about nine inches so I measured and right here is the, uh, my shoulder point. And on the passenger side, it's about halfway up the window. So what I'm gonna do is mount, the, mount this top anchor point just above, just so there's, um, I don't know, a couple inches above shoulder height where this, uh, where the webbing starts to come out. So that's gonna be the tough part. And the reason why is because this is the, the backing plate uh, that the, this anchor will screw into. And what we've gotta do is fish this up in into the post through this way. So I think what I'm gonna do is fish a, a wire down the length and put a, so put a wire on here, put a wire on the bottom so I can control the bottom and it will be mounted about there. So what I'll do is drill a hole, I don't know what this is, maybe a half inch. Put a half inch hole here where this plate will land. This gets mounted behind the, or within the post. And so we just want this to extrude out. Ideally, the best thing to do is to um, either tack weld this in place or screw with or, or bolt in with these two other bolts to keep this plate in place. But once the seat belt, uh, this anchor post is in place, it shouldn't move. It shouldn't go anywhere. So that's going to be the tough part. The easy part is mounting the, uh, the retractor onto the floor. That'll, of course, that kind of goes 
in this general vicinity it's not real critical but we want to try to make sure that because it's a two-door you know passengers coming through in and out of the back seat try not to have a, a spot where they're going to kick it so i don't know we'll we'll uh we'll figure that out it'll get me on there pretty well um and what we're not going to do quite yet today is the other side of the lap belt that gets mounted in that vicinity near the, near the transmission tunnel. I don't know exactly where the back seat or the, the front seat is going to land or the, the back of the front seat. So I think we're going to hold off on putting that in. It It's uh. I'll have to wait to see where the where the seat's gonna end up uh, mainly. So it's not again. It's not that critical if it's back further towards the back seat or on this little incline. I don't think that's gonna matter tremendously, but we just want to make sure it looks good. So um, so what I did, uh, I opened up the packages and brought out all the hardware. This is generally how this retracting unit's gonna lie. So uh, this flat plate, large flat plate's gonna go on the bottom side of the car and with a lock washer uh, number eight or, or grade eight hardware it's all included so everything looks pretty well I got uh, a turquoise or a teal color to match the exterior and the interior of the car so I think it's gonna look good uh, so that's about it. Um, I'm gonna put the. Uh, All right, I'm gonna wire up this guy, or at least get some of uh, those lines fished in through the post. I'm gonna drill this that uh, diameter hole into the post where I think that should land, and we'll see how big of a struggle it's gonna be to, to get that in place and get this bolt started into this backing plate. All right. Now, before we do that, let me show you how this, the hardware is gonna lie on this lap belt portion. So, I think this is, Should be the is the female side of the clip, the male side from the three point is going to go in there, and I think this is actually going to lie like this. So the way I have this organized, I think should work fine. Another large backing plate goes on the bottom of the car with a lock washer. Uh, so just want to show you those details. The back seat seat belts are pretty straightforward, not complicated. And so what I did was I already have drilled the holes and they're about oh I don't know eight nine ten inches from the wall and that side is gonna get the the male the male clasp and on towards the center 
So this passenger side. So this center one is uh, about here. This will have the female clip because the reason I put this in the middle is just because the majority of people may be right-handed and this is might be the easiest to get their their body over and grab it and pull it to the right. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And maybe I'll, and I mean maybe to make it symmetrical I may put this also this uh, female part also near the near the transmission tunnel. Um, so uh, we're not going to install those today because we just have to wait until we get carpet in here. But I just want to show you how this is going to go. Um, and here is the hardware. Again, all the hardware is included, which is nice. So we got a washer. This large plate's going to go on the bottom of the car with a lock washer. And grade 8 hardware. And uh, the same thing for this washer, large washer, lock washer. So that's that. Just wanted to show you that real quick. So basically trying to get this plate up into the cavity. So that plate's sitting back there. And what I wanted to do was to get this, this bolt to hold it in place so that I could take, these were just used as guide screws to go through the two. Uh, the top and bottom mount points. So what I'm going to do is take those out and securely be able to hold this and then put some um, some stainless steel wood screws in there to help just hold that there because can't really mount the uh, the top um, part of the uh, the seat belt because I need to put on this finishing, uh, uh, I guess vinyl is going to go there plus the windlass. So that's got to go on. And also this, uh, this bezel molding for the back quarter pan, uh, window. So that's where we're at. Let me try to get some uh, wood screws that will work there that I have. Hopefully I've got some stainless ones. Otherwise I'll have to go to the hardware store. So we've got the this plate in place where it needs to be behind the B pillar and I've got uh, let me try to show you this. Oh. Now, what did I do with this? Drill and tap, putting quarter 20 bolts to hold that plate in place. And then later, when we put the final seat belt in place, it'll just stay, stay there. So I can't, uh, this is like a hollow. There's a, there's a gap between the face of the, the pillar and that plate. Uh, normally what I would have done was drill out this hole and put in a spot weld to hold that plate, but um, that won't work. So I'm going to drill and tap. This bit's a little dull. Let me go sharpen it up. Okay, I've got one quarter 20 bolt tapped in. This is firm. I'm going to tap in this other 
drill it and tap it. Let me get this done and I'll get back to you. All right, well, I'm having a tough time tapping into here. Anyway, I've got one bolt that's securing the plate. The plate's back here. I'm gonna try to put this, or at least dry fit this. I haven't had the best of luck on the passenger side for the rear quarter glass. I'm still waiting for the mount that mounts onto the glass because the uh, the one that I had was pretty far rusted and and deteriorated. So that was a problem. Let me see if I can get this. All right, hold on a second. Let me get you mounted on this. <clears throat> I got a handful of tools here, just struggling. It's always a struggle. Let me see if this goes in, just as a dry fit. Just too short. Uh, come on, really? I use the catch a little bit and I can pull the rest in. May end up having to switch out this bolt or one that's this looks like it's about a three quarter inch or one inch. Just need another quarter of an inch. That in. We're taking out this. without this lock washer just see if it'll go there's a, there's a capture nut let me try it without that I just want to know if it's going to work or not. Okay, so it... Uh, because the this backing plate is just a little bit too far back. It's at least a quarter of an inch, maybe three, six, maybe five sixteenth or a little more.
this should work. Yeah, so it swivels as it should. Alright, that'll work. Let me take this off because it's we have to wait until we get the windlass on and the vinyl. I do the interior. I just mainly wanted to check and make sure that this is mounted. And I'll go ahead and work on the other side. Um, but. Uh, while we're here, we'll work on putting a hole in the floor at the base of the the, the triangle, and we'll go from there. After looking at how the how this thing lies, I may end up mounting this right in line with the edge of the door frame. So it'll probably be just a pretty much straight up and down. Um, I don't believe there's going to be that much obtrusion in the way of uh, kicking this thing. Somebody coming and going out of the back seat. There's probably not going to be anybody ever riding the back seat, but in case there is, I think they, just by stepping over that should be okay. So that's what we're going to do is drill a hole to that to line that up. I used a 7 16 inch bit, so our mounting hole is right there. So it's gonna kind of lie just like that. Let me just show you on the outside. And that's not too bad. Getting the, your foot in there. The back seat's gonna be roughly oh, right about here. These legs are. So that shouldn't be terribly bad. Uh, so let me go ahead and well actually this is about as far as I'm going to go today because we certainly can't mount this permanently. We've got to put carpeting in. The main part was I wanted to get this in place and make sure I didn't have any difficulties uh, mounting that backing bracket. Putting the backing bracket on the bottom of the car with a lock washer and nut. Um, I'll spray this fresh, uh, fresh bare metal with uh, some paint or undercoating so that that's protected. The center or the small strap that's going to mate with this is uh, I'll wait to drill the holes and mount that after we get the carpeting in and the front seat. But I'll go ahead and do the driver's side now that I know how to do it. It was a real struggle getting this top mount. The trick is to tie something onto the into these two. Bring it out here. Into these two mounting holes, I use some uh, solid wire, so it's a little bit stiff. Fished it into the into the B pillar, and then fasten it to these guys. Slid the backing plate up into place in the general vicinity where it got the, the hole for the bolt to go through. 
and then located the bolt. Uh, I put a, a screwdriver, jammed the screwdriver up there, a long one, that would hold the back of this backing plate so that I could then put the bolt into here. After I had that, it took a while to do. Uh, after I've got that in place and, and secured, then I drilled into the B pillar for these holes and drilled and tapped put in a quarter 20 bolt that would help hold the backing plate in place while um, removing the main bolt um, and then you know we can finish doing the upholstering and then when it's time to mount the the top of the seat belt then this hole and that uh, tapped backing plate is going to be in place and not move so it'll accept it so the, the idea is to sandwich this backing plate onto the b pillar and then having that bolt onto the top of the seat belt it it's uh pretty secure or that's as bad as secure as you can get it so that's about it as far as this video goes. Um, it's a short one, but I think it just illustrates how we can um, put in a three-point seat belt onto um, a sedan. On a Bel Air, it's a little bit more difficult, and maybe, and a lot of guys don't even use three-point, they just use a lap belt because you don't really want to have a seat belt hanging down there with open glass. It just doesn't look good. But um, fortunately, I like the idea of a three point seat belt just for safety. Don't want to be squeezing my guts out on the lap belt. I've got lap belts on, uh, on my 66 Pontiac. And um, I don't know, I, I drive that a lot more than these other cars. But, uh, you know, having a three-point seatbelt is just uh, a safe thing to have, and it's uh, easier on your stomach if you do have to slam the brakes on or if you do have a head on. So, anyway, um, just wanted to show you this, how I did it, and hopefully you've learned something. I know I have. I hope the other, the driver's side goes as well as this, this took a while to do, but you know, it's uh, persistence and a lot of perspiration. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm Daryl from Sweet Hot Rods and Honey. And thanks again, and we'll see you next time.